Okay, so welcome to this course. So again, it's CES 2206 and its description is mechanics of deformable bodies. So um, we're going to have our first lecture, which is about the concept of stress. And I'll be your instructor throughout the semester. And most of you already know me as the shown name in the slide, okay? So throughout our first part of the lecture, which is um, we'll be talking about stress and strain. So first is we'll talk about the, the stress part. So we're going to have different um, parts for the stress topic. So as much as we can for this meeting. So probably we can finish at least going towards the average normal stress. Okay, and then on Tuesday, so we'll meet again on Tuesday since um, there's no class on Thursdays because it's Cebu City Charter Day. Okay, so we'll meet now and then we'll meet on Tuesday next week. So that's February 22. Then we can discuss another topics para makaapasta. <clears throat> okay, so we have shear stress and then bearing stress and then thin walled pressure vessels. So that's tangential stress and longitudinal stress. But let's start off with the concept of stress first. <clears throat> Okay, so recall that from your uh, MEC one, so I don't know what the course description for your statics of rigid bodies is that, for example, our body is being acted by an external force. So what we assumed there in, the, in that particular course was that um, the, the system is in equilibrium. So meaning there's no translation, meaning there's no movement. So another term for translation is movement. So I think uh, translation will be described as the movement from left to right. So rot rotation is, that will be the twisting. So as what we have learned in um, physics, that's torque. So another term for moment is torque in physics, so that's why um, since there's no rotation and no movement, so notice that the summation of forces and the summation of moments are equal to zero. So meaning um, it's in equilibrium. And also since statics, yeah, there's, um, we haven't yet considered the deformation aspect of the material, meaning the bending, or let's say the kanang, uh, yeah, pag break sa material, so there's no deflection or deformation. So usually this um, symbol delta or uh, probably it's gamma or delta, um, this symbolizes as deflection in most of the um, higher courses such as reinforced concrete and steel design. Okay, so I think you are, you are pretty familiar with this um, concept from statics of rigid bodies. So again, our, our body is in equilibrium state. So I think the aim of that course was just to understand the behavior of the forces and getting to know the forces, the direction, and also the moment. So next is we also recall the support reaction systems. So I think you are also um, a topic coming from statics of rigid bodies. So we have summation of forces equal to zero. So it's whether it's uniformly distributed or there's an upward 
there's a compressive or tensile force. So again, since we are um, dealing with a static body, so the summation of forces x is equal to zero. So same goes for the vertical direction of that force. And also the moment about that particular reaction is all also equal to zero. So yeah. So the same concept as the previous slide, but it's being refined further because we now have two components of your forces, horizontal and vertical. And of course, the moment will depend on the moment arm, the distance from the point of origin. All right. So here are some of the different types of reactions depending on the type of connection. So cable is, of course, that will be a tension or tensile force. So I think what you need to, to recall here is that if it's away from the joint, that will be tension. If it's towards the joint, that will be compression. Okay. So roller is that will be a compressive force supporting the bar. Usually roller is only one force. It's perpendicular to the material. We have a smooth support that will be depending on the angle of kung asa siya nakatukod. We have external pin which comprises of two forces, vertical and horizontal, the same as your internal pin. And if you have a fixed support, you have vertical, horizontal, and a moment, which is three unknowns. So probably in most of our discussions going towards the higher topics, what will be recurring normally in your problems is the roller the external pin um, i think internal pin will be um, on some topics but delicia always recurring uh, connection but i'll just highlight it okay i think these are the same as your external pin and then lastly is your fixed support so muna siya ng mga three unknowns and then you'll be using the three moment equation the other types of um, I think this will be highlighted more on your theory of structures kung ng mga kung na indeterminate numbers na. Okay, so I think you also have this one in your MEC one or in your statics course. So you have area, centroid, and second moment of inertia. Okay, so you also have the transfer formula. So area is, I think if you know pretty well from our class back in the integral calculus, this is the formula for area. This is the formula for centroid. So I think sa inyohang statics, if I'm not mistaken, pidi mo mag-integral, pidi sad mo kaning pinasummation nga aspect summation of formula but the summation formula is only applicable if your uh, material is kanang kanang a polygon jud ba kanang known figures siya like square or uh, mga rectangle sana but if it's an irregular shape object so better use the integral aspect so second moment of inertia is this formula i think you are pretty familiar with this also so transfer formula is only used when you try to transfer the, uh, I mean, you try to, for example, this is the, the T section, uh, T beam. So if you try to get the moment of inertia with respect to its neutral axis, so neutral axis, and then let's say this is the centroid, so you will have to use a transfer formula to be able to 
um, solve for the moment of inertia. So don't worry about this yet because Anisha is useful Anisha later on when you try to design some members na sa inyo hang system. Like ang iyang kadakon, ang iyang mga sizes. Ana. So for now is just appreciate the complexity of the formula. But ay lang sa inyo dibdiba sa karon. I think ayon yung dibdibon is katong mga previous slide which is the summation of forces x, y, and then summation of moments. Okay, so you also have the y aspect there eh, for the transfer formula. Okay, so going towards um, deformable bodies is that from statics, since we are more concerned with the external aspect, so the behavior of the force going towards the internal part of the material was not yet um, discussed there because again, Murag, since we are just starting to know the behavior of the external force towards the material, so moto siya ang introduction part, the statics part. But now is since we are now in the higher course, which is deformable bodies, so we now take look. So so we now look into the behavior of the material once the, the the external force penetrates towards the internal aspect of the material. So muna siya ang kanangkuan. Ang inyong iting karon nga ang external force na siya effect towards the internal aspect of the material, thus creating deformities such as deflection or let's say failure aspect of the material, kanang breakage, ana. So, muna siya yung i-think karon sa kanina course. Okay? So, of course, is since we now relate it to the equilibrium forces, so, mugi apun siya, but of course, we now have the resultant of internal forces using the equations of equilibrium. So, same formula, same koan, but now, is we take into account the internal aspect of the forces. So, so usually when we try to cut our material, the area that is being exposed is what we call as the cross section. And magbalik balik ni siyang term because we will be solving the cross sectional area of the material. So, for example, you, you have a cylinder. And, and we try to cut a plane at the center. So the exposed part is the circle, diba? Right? This will be your cross section area, or what we normally call as cross sectional area. So of course the plane, uh, the plane, the the cutting plane is delicia always horizontal, but it could be vertical. So let's say mo siya ang cutting plane niyo, di ba? So may mo siya nga ang cutting plane dere is rectangle na sad, di ba? Na so that's another cross sectional area na sad. And the cross section area will depend on the force, on the behavior of the force or the direction of the force. Okay, I think if you if you know the basic formula for stress, that would be force over area, di ba? Yeah. Um, I think you also need to recall the different formulas for the area, such as the area of the circle, area of the triangle, area of rectangle, or any area of the polygons. Labina sa kanang mga kwan, let's say hexagon, kanang mga bolts, di ba? Namtay mga bolts, nga diligent circle always, like na may hexagon, di ba? Ang mga inana siya ng mga kwan. So you need to know the area the formula for the area for those polygons. Okay, so this is the example again for the cutting plane with the corresponding internal forces. So this is just a representation of the, or an overview of 
what will happen if we try to analyze the internal force of the material. So usually we have four, depending on the force that is acting on the material. So let's say you, you, you have all the forces present in your material. So meaning all, all of these four internal force are present. So actual force, shear force, torque, and bending moments. So usually bending mo um, torque and bending moments are the same because they are just um, rotation, rotation forces. And I think it will just depend on the direction of the torque or the rotation or the bending. Now, whether it's towards the z-axis or towards the x-axis or y-axis. But usually, sa atong level is we just deal with the 2D plane, x and y uh, aspect. Dili pa tamag 3D kay medyo labad kay sa 3D. So actual force is that's the perpendicular force from the area. So perpendicular na siya. So if this is the area, so normally the internal force or the actual force is perpendicular sa inyong kwan, sa inyong area. The shear force is par parallel to the area of concern. So if this is the circle, usually kuyog siya sa area na muna siya inyong kwan. Or the same plane siya na, the same plane. So if it's um, actual force, let's say my palm is the area. So usually the force is this one, kaning kwan, kaning pen, perpendicular siya. So if the area is shear, so usually the, the pen is flat on the area sa dana, towards dito sa X or padong baron sa Z axis sa Basta mo na siya timanan ninyo, actual is perpendicular and then shear is parallel towards the area. So in most books, um, the designation of forces will depend on the author. So if you have actual force, so normally we call it as P, na. then for shear is V. Na. So usually if you have plenty of actual forces, P1, P2, yeah, P sub N, depending on the number of actual forces. And then V1, V2, and then V sub N. So same goes for your torque and bending moments. Okay. So these are just the definition of the different forces, so actual forces, pushing or pulling action. So notice that uh, it's highlighted there. It's perpendicular to the section or to the area. So shear force is the sliding portion. So again, sliding means it's parallel to the section or to the area. Okay, so twisting and then bending for, so again, they are the same, but I think Morag na, 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 na differentiate lang siya because let's say if you have a ruler, then you try to make a torque in the x axis. So Morag twisting siya. So that's why it's super specified here that torque is twisting. So if mo twist yung material ana, on the x axis, so that's why it's torque. Bending siya, it's ana siya Morag kanang mo bao gani ana. Yeah, di man yung bago kung pen good so na atalan na ikwan. So sige lang, we'll just go deeper once we get into torque and bending. Okay, so these are the forces that you can imagine. So notice that MX is twisting, di ba? And then MY is um, bending. So it will bend on the y-axis, it will bend on the z-axis. 
Basta i-try lang yung bend-bend. If na may ruler niya, so you can bend, ana. Or let's say you have a wire, ana. So let's say mo niya siyang wire, di ba? So bend, ana. Bend on this direction. Then I can also bend it towards the other direction. That's bending moment. And then if it's twisting, so I'll twist the wire, di ba? So asya yung twisting ng mga kwan na mga behavior na. But all of which are just um, torque ya pun. In physics aspect ha. Bale sa CE, sa civil engineering aspect is gi-refine lang siya into twisting and then bending. Okay, so here's a close-up view of the moments together with the forces also. So X, Y, Z, and then um, X, Y, Z also for the moments. So, Masha, kung igayon ganina is for you to be able to visualize the aning figure is you try to get a ruler and then ana magbend bend mo ana depende sa inyo ang kanang kuan gusto i-discover sa mga moments X, Y, or Z ana. Then you will know the behavior of it. So whether it's bending or twisting. I'm sorry. Okay, so by integrating the the different um, principles mentioned earlier, so the external loads, so coming from statics of rigid bodies, we can now induce or have an internal resistance. Okay, so ako na siya na mute. Magwago rin siya kabantay or as in late comer ko rin siya. Si Zelio. Okay, so going back is so coming from external loads is now we have um, the external loads coming from statics one is um, can induce an internal resistance to the material. So that's what we can get from statics going towards the strata materials. And then um, examining an exploratory section. So just like um, integral calculus, so we can just get a specific part of the material. So that um, represents a whole thing, diba? So um, the same as calculus too, um, naratay differential area, and then that differential area will represent the whole area na. So um, na siya nga, nga thinking. So, and then also the internal forces will now have an effect to the material. So that's what we call as the, the axial stress, the shear stress, the bending and the twisting effects to the material. Okay. So you also have the distribution of load to the section fibers. So section fibers is again, this is coming from the exploratory section. And lastly is we need to consider also the, the exceeding stress limits and excessive deformation of the material. So probably this last statement here will be understood once we go to the examples because um, for example, you have different loads being applied to the material. So ang kwana na ang sa material is na po capacity to hold a certain amount of uh, stress or force. So that's why we have, if we exceed ang, ang stress limit, so meaning na <clears throat> na siya ay kanang kwan, di ba? Na siya ay failure at some point. 
also excessive deformation. So, of course, if maka, maka near mo sa yahang limit, so probably there's uh, ano, di ba? Uh, deformation happening in the material. So, for example, katong ipangita ganina, di ba? So, if, so if gamay rang a force kung i-induce sa wire, so gamay rang po yung deformation, di ba? But once I exceed or or put a lot of efforts or stress sa inyong material, so muda ko sa dayahang deformation, di ba? So, muna siya inyong kuhan, inyong i-observe. Um, online ba ba ko? Hello? Yes, yes sir. sir. Ah, sige, sige. Okay, so in this course is we'll be studying the strength and the rigidity of the different um, uh, the behavior of the material, strength and its rigidity. So strength will reflect to stress and rigidity will reflect to deform deformity of the material. So internal stress corresponding to deformation. And then we also have the elastic behavior of the material. We also take into account the geometric properties of the material with effects to the distribution of stress. So, maglalahi ang behavior sa material depending sa iyang geometry. So, if you notice sa itong mga buildings, di ba, na may mga, mga I-beam, mga, mga L-shape or mga angle bars, ano, di ba? So, lalahi po di ang behavior as per the, the geometry of the material. And then also the effect of the combination of internal loads to the material. So as what I have mentioned in the previous slides, so those will be the, the, the axial, the shear, and the twisting and bending behaviors. Okay, so strength of materials, MEC3, mechanics of materials, uh, or solids. So main reference is Spital and Singer. So this is an old book. And this book was totally used by my time. So way back 2010. So And I think the, the new version for this one is Katong Naasa Syllabus, which is by Pytel and Kusalaas. So uh, I think kibano mo ko asa mo makuha sa mga reference. So try to get na lang siguro. Or if you are kanang ko anjud, if you if you are moral jud na type of person, so you have to buy the ko anjud the book itself, di ba? So let's go to the average normal stress. I'm oh, sorry. So simple stress is it's just, the, it's just the stress or the force per unit area where P is the applied force and then the A is the, um, the centroid of the area of the cross section. So usually stress is this formula, force over area, or it could be V over A depending on the direction of the, the force. So usually in, in, as far as I can remember, is you only have one formula for stress, but we need to take into account the direction of the force for us to be able to know what type of stress we are dealing with. Now, so I think the, the general formula for stress is force over area. And then the force will, you just have to take into account the direction of the force for you to be able to determine whether it should be normal stress or actual stress 
or shear stress or bearing stress ana. So depending on kan. Depending on the behavior of the force towards the area. Whether it's perpendicular or it's tangential or it's um, parallel. Marginana siya nga aspect. So normal stress is that's another term for axial stress or axial tension or axial compression. So ibutang lang tension and compression para maglibog mong samot. Ito, ito, dili, ito. So, um, para na ako, you can just call it as axial stress or normal stress, but the tension and compression aspect of the stress will just depend on the direction of the force na applied sa internal member. So, muna, murag, additional na siya ngakuan, nga information. Nga the force is in tension, the force is in compression. So, normally, if you have this area, now, if it's away from the if it's away from the area, na that is tension. If it's towards the area, na meaning nagduot siya, di ba? That's compression. So I think ibawon maane, di ba? So just a reminder lang siguro. Okay. So for example, you have two bars here, and then both bars have um, different um, cross-sectional area. So one is 10 mm squared, the other one is 1000 mm squared, square millimeters. Then both have different applications of the load, which is um, 50, 500 newtons and 5000 newtons. So normally, if we try to imagine the behavior of the material, so if we try to cut a section here, ba? so um, circular na siya, di ba? So rectangle siya, di ha? But of course, if you try to look at a cylinder sa yung face, sa yung front view, so ayan dagway is rectangle mo di ba? But usually when we try to discuss bars, usually bars are in cylindrical form. So muna siya yung cross-sectional area. So again, from what we have learned from the major or from the general formula of stress, that would be force over area. So that's P over A. So for bar one, So the force is, so we just put P sub one because it's, um, it's referring to bar number one. That's 500 newtons. And then for bar, I mean for the area. So again, since it's circular area, so the formula for the area of the circle is pi D squared over four. So I hope you remember this formula. So knowing uh, wala mo yung solid mensuration, so kailangan mo mo backtrack sa inyong geometry. So solving this one is we have pi times 10 squared over 4. So try to give me the answer as I write the information for bar number 2. Oops, sorry. 78.54, sir. So 54 millimeter squared. Okay. So for bar number two, you have 5,000 newtons. And then um, the area... Excuse me, sir. Ah. Isn't the 10 millimeters squared already the area, sir? Uh, oh, the bito, no, sakto, bito, no. oh, sakto, sakto de. So, na over, ko na to, na over answer na to ang kwan. So, let me try to clear things lang ha. Ang kuy magdine siya ma clear ng ano mani. Ah, sigilang atolal ni kwan. I. 
hindi mo siya ma-raise. Sige lang. Okay, so let's try this next slide lang siguro, Ana. So, sakto to. So, thank you for that, Steve. So, the effect on the internal force, so again, as per mentioned on the previous slide, is that the, internal, the external force will create an equilibrium um, counterpart in your internal aspect. So, meaning if you try to cut this part here, so since this one is in tension, so it will also create a tension on the other side. So tension gap on but it's on the opposite direction for it to be in equilibrium. So that's why you have a, 5, 000, a, a 500 newtons on the other direction, opposing the 500 external force, and then 5,000 newtons on bar number two on the opposite direction as well as sa inyo hang 5,000 newtons going downwards. Na. So, sakto tong gingo ni Steve dahil ganina nga, it's already in area. Okay. Na, kung na dito siya, himo na siyang millimeter to the power of 4 if ato ba tong i-compute. So, muna siyang area. And then again, since it's just a basic formula, so, you have here um, the force for bar number one, 500 divided by 10. So if you want to convert it into meter squared, so pretty rigid kayo, that would be 10 to the negative six, shortcut na siya. But for those of you nga, di pa kayo familiar sa shortcut, na muna siya ang inyong i-multiply for it to become m squared. So kana, manual, manual lang inyong pagkuhan lang, pag, um, pag, create sa inyong kuhan, sa inyong conversion. Okay? So, this is, this is the stress for bar number 150 times 10 to the power of 6 meter squared, newton per meter squared, and then the other one is 5 times 10 to the power of 6 newton per meter squared. So, most likely in what you will encounter in books is that the stress are in megapascal or in pascal. So pascal is newton per meter squared. So So you can also express this one as pascal, PA. But for shortcut, so if you have newton divided by mm squared, so automatically this one is already megapascal. So mega is 1 times 10 to the power of 6, diba? So notice that we have 10 to the power of 6 here, which can be converted to mega, diba? Mega Pascal. Na, shortcut na siya para di na mo maglisod. So Newton divided by millimeter squared, mega Pascal siya dito. But if it's Newton divided by meter squared, it's only Pascal. Na, shortcut na siya. So you also have kilopascal depending on the degree of your stress. Pascal, kilopascal, megapascal, gigapascal. Depending na siya. So I think what you need to to understand here is that ang inyong external force will convert siya og opposite direction towards the internal force for it to be in equilibrium. Ana. So, marag mag imagine mag -cut -cut lang mo, ana. for example, for here, the bar number one, mag -cut lang mo at a certain portion, then you create the force opposite of the given external load. So, 500 downwards, so meaning ang internal force is 500 going upwards for it to be in equilibrium. Same goes for bar number two. So, you just cut the section and then create the internal force opposite to the external force even. Okay, so questions so far or conf any confusion? And so far, sir. Okay, so let's try to go to the next slide.
So usually what we what you need to know about this is the centroid of the of the of the stress. But is important karun because we won't be dealing with this particular um, aspect yet. Ato na siguro dito sa mga kuana, sa mga moment of inertia, second moment of inertia na. So di na magamit ang inyong mga centroid. So we skip this for now. So let's try to solve this problem na saan ka niya. So, so let's say um, the bolt shown in the figure is subjected to a tensile force of 70 kilonewtons. So meaning, ang inyong bolt, so let's say it could be on this direction, on tensile, na depende sa inyong trip, o kung asa pa dung, basta tensile siya, di ba? external. Or it could also be going upwards, di ba? Seventy, ana. So kamo repili ana because it's not totally um, described in the problem. Kung asa dapat ang seventy kilonewton of force. So we need to determine the tensile stress in the body of the bolt. So body of the bolt is this one. Next is we need to determine the tensile stress at the at the root of the bolt, which is this one, that's the root. Then lastly is the compressive stress at the head of the bolt. So this one, this is the head of the bolt. And notice that the head of the bolt is a hexagon. So again, as what I mentioned earlier, is since we will be dealing with areas, so dapat kibaw mo sa on pag solve sa area sa hexagon. Diba? So kaniguro, kaniguro the bolt and the, the body of the bolt and the root of the bolt, it's pretty simple because puro siya circle, diba? Ang yang cross sectional area. As seen above, so you have, let's say this is the root, the, the root. then let's say this is the body, diba? So puro siya circle, diba? But for the head, it's a hexagon. So, karon murag magtinga ta di ba on saan to pag solve sa area sa hexagon? Because we need to solve number three. Diba? So, let's try to solve it here. So, the first is we need to. Um, get the stress at the body of the bolt. So let's say this is the 70 kilonewtons. So if you try to cut a section at the, the body, so ako lang yan, So medyo bati ang drawing, kay nagalisod pa ko sa akong drawing tablet. So if this is the 70 kilonewton external force, so this is the 70 kilonewton internal force still in compression. Okay. So as per formula, that will be P over A. So this will be 70 kilonewtons. So normally what I usually do since I see that the Dimensions is in millimeter. So, akong baton is ako na siyang i newton daan ng force. Ako siyang i 70,000 newtons. Para ang gawa sa kong answer is mega pascal na. So, divided by pi d squared over 4. So, that's 38 squared over 4. So, the stress at the body. So, let's so, pwede nyo yan asad, sigma sub body. So, the answer would be? Sixty one point seventy two sir. Nila? Um, 
So 61.72. So notice that again, this one is mm squared. Newton over mm squared is mega pascal. So automatic na siya mega pascal. So shortcut lang na siya kay para hindi na kayo mo magsigig convert convert pa. Okay, for sure if you're going to use newton per meter squared, ang magawasan na kayo mga millions yung answer na millions pascal na. So next is at the root of the bolt. So So still 70 kilonewtons. And then 70 external, di ba? So sigma sub root is equal to force over area. So again, the force is 70,000 newtons. So again and again, I make it in newtons because I am dividing by millimeters. Okay, para automatically, my answer would be in megapascal. So pi d squared over 4, that's the area of the circle. So that would be the stress in the root of the bolt. 87.04, sir. 87.04. So mega pascal. So last question is that Determine the compressive stress at the head of the bolt. As the bolt bears on the surface to resist the tensile load. So meaning, um, if you're going to imagine the hexagonal bolt head, so di ba nakasumpay mo na inyong kwan di ba inyong body and our root. So meaning ana ang more resist na lang sa inyong kwan sa inyong tensile load is this portion kaning black area the net area of the bolt so laban na daan nga example ba so for you to be able to get this net area so we have to determine first the area of the hexagon minus the area of the body Okay, mamuna siya na connect sa head sa bolt, di ba? Now, our problem is how are we going to solve for the area of the hexagon? So, probably, I'll just leave it to you and saan na siya pag-answer. Basta, ang area na gamito ninyo is kanis siya. Area net. Okay? So, I'll just leave it to you as a practice na kuan. But sige lang, ang answer is, makita mas answer dyan. So, 61.72, that's correct. Then, 87.04, megapascal. And for number three, for you to be able to verify your answer later on, is this would be the answer. 35.29. So, again, for additional hint, so that would be stress. And then, force over the area net. So that would be the hexagon minus the area of the body of the bolt. And that would be 35.29. So I think the challenging part here is getting the area of the hexagon. Okay, wala siya kanang kuan, di ba? Wala siya um, formulated na equation ang hexagon. Inyong bato na na is maghimamog six triangles. Yeah, solve it to get the area of the hexagon. All right, so questions so far? No questions? Okay, so I think hearing none, so
can now proceed with the... Sir, um, I do have a question, sir. Ah, sige. Can we go back to slide, sir? If it's just the black side of the kanang shaded part, sir, um, you resist stress, mm. does that mean that ang among minus niya is ang diameter is 60 millimeters? Because if among minus niya, sir, is the 38 millimeter nga diameter, okay, that would also include the white, the bigger white circle. The actually, I don't mind ang drawing, okay? Ang drawing warag na, na over exaggerates, yeah? Actually, yeah, narajo na siya dari the pita jud ang 38 diameter. Na. But I think the 60 millimeter, sir, is like murag ang, out, ang outline sa. Oh, sa bolt, di ba? Oh, sa bolt. Oh, ang kanin siya 60. But I think ang kanin 60, hmm. kanin siya nga 60 is um, magamit siya for the determination of the area of the hexagon. Ah, okay, sir. Pero katulad dun, 38 ang uh, naman uh, Okay, murag. Uh, okay, sir. Kung siya ilabot sa kuan ba, murag siya ka nang uh, nak-experience sa stress lang siguro sa kuan sa katong uh, both head is katulad yung aspect nga wala nakasumpay ang inyohang body sa boat. Okay, murag mahug mong na if you try to extend this one, ana, kanis siya. So, muna siya, appeal po siya sa 70, di ba? Maka-experience po siya sa 70 kilonewtons. Yeah, kaning the rest, kaning kaning siya, is muna siya ang resist sa inyohang koan, sa inyohang 70 na koan. Okay, muna mo siyang magpaak sa kahoy, di ba? So, for example, na may kahoy dali. Na. And then, let's say this one is the 70. So, this portion here is muna siya mag-resist, compressive na siya towards the material. Ana. So, muna siya, muna, kailangan siya og visualization jud if ako ay paing nun sa kaning nga course jud. Thank you, sir. Okay, sige, sige. So, I, so try to kung lang siguro, go back into this recording later para ma- fully grasp niyo ang concept ang concept Okay so next is we go to uh truss or a kanang kuan kaning member niyo kaning kuan sa inyo hang mac 1 So we have a 30 kN tension Intentions, yeah, because it's away from the joint. So before we can able to, before we're able to, to solve for the stress of the different materials. So notice that the material has a twenty diameter uh, dimension, twenty millimeter diameter, and then the other one is fifty in diameter. So of course, before we can solve for the different stresses along these joints. So we have to do some static na mga kuhan, di ba? Static na mga equations. So we need to solve for the reactions at C and the reactions at A. Now since these are both pin supports, so meaning we have two types of forces, vertical and then horizontal. Okay. Oops, sorry. So we have here this direction. So let's try to assume forces first. So nevertheless, if our our assumption for the direction is wrong, so Amagawas ng answer Anna is negative. And we just have to flip the image or the direction of the force. Okay, so since we have 30 here, so we can take moments about C for us to be able to get the reactions at A. So summation moments about C is equal to zero. So notice that we have 60, uh, 600 millimeters, I mean. So that would be, um, Let's say, oops, sorry. Click na lang ako noon. 
So let's say we, this one is a sub x since it's going in the x direction. So a sub x times the moment arm distance, the perpendicular distance coming from C towards A sub X, that would be 600 millimeters. So since A sub Y is collinear to the joint and there's no perpendicular distance that we can get coming from C towards AY since it's collinear, so we can neglect that portion, right? Okay, it's collinear. So lastly is the 30 kilonewton force. So from C going towards the 30 kilonewton for force perpendicular distance. So that would be, so this one is kwanin niya. Ang rotation niya is counterclockwise. So this is negative. So if clockwise, positive. Ana. Sakto ba? Clockwise, positive. Counterclockwise, negative. Basta depende na ninyo yun. Saan niya pagkawan? Pag-assume sa mga forces. So if the rotation is clockwise, so positive siya, so meaning since the rotation of AX is negative, I mean it's counterclockwise, so negative siya. And then plus 30 kilonewtons, so I just make it 30,000. Okay, para kuan siya. Or pili po siya 30 lang, okay, para kuan. Ang gawas po sa yung answer later on is kilonewtons po niya. 30 times 800 millimeters is equal to zero. So we have AX times 600 equals 30 times 800. So AX is equal to forty. So 40 kilonewtons. So notice that this one is 40 kilonewtons. So meaning, ang assumption ito sa C ganina, since the same direction man siya sa AX, so meaning dili siya maode eh. Dapat it should be on the other direction kay dili na siya balance, di ba? So summation of forces X, so this one is positive. So summation of forces x is equal to zero. So we can solve it as 40 kilonewtons and then minus C sub x is equal to zero. So C sub x is equal to 40 kilonewtons. Okay. So dapat equilibrium siya, di ba? Okay, dapat equal to zero man siya. <clears throat> so lastly is the vertical components. So what we can do here is we can just um, take moments about B so that we can determine the vertical reactions. So moment about B is equal to zero. So we have AY and then BY. That would be clockwise direction. AY plus by and then times 800 millimeters and then counterclockwise is we don't have any counterclockwise uh, moment uh, we do have one but it's in cy so that's minus um, uh, cx day. i mean cx times 600 equal to zero. Okay, so AY plus BY, then times 800, then you have 40 times 600. So we now have the first equation, AY plus BY. So pila man siya, AY plus BY is? 30. So 30 kilonewtons. Now since our 
our system is in kanang equilibrium. So mura siya kanang not totally symmetrical but kanang kuan. There's no other option uh, kanang ato na itake moments. So atong button run is we just consider this one as equal portions. So this will become 2Ay equals 30 kilonewtons. So again, the purpose of 